What if your next ride didn't need a driver or a pilot? Rwanda just made that a reality. Today, for the first time in Africa, a self-flying air taxi will be take to the skies. The Ehang E-206 teams, Africa's first autonomous flying car, has taken off in Kigali. The aircraft itself is a marvel of engineering. 16 independent rotors lift the two-passenger cabin to speeds of 130 km per hour. Its electric motors power a 35-kilometer range with zero emissions, reaching altitudes of 3,000 meters, 21 minutes of pure autonomous flight, controlled entirely by artificial intelligence and 5G connectivity. No joysticks, no human intervention, just technology doing what seemed impossible just years ago. But this moment didn't happen overnight. To understand why this matters, we need to step back and look at Africa's relationship with transportation, because this flying car represents something much bigger than just moving people through the air. For over a century, Africa has faced unique transportation challenges that have shaped entire economies. Colonial powers built railways to extract resources, not to connect communities. Roads were designed to serve colonial interests, leaving massive gaps in infrastructure that persists today. When independence came, many African nations inherited transportation systems that served foreign needs, not local populations. The numbers tell a stark story. Sub-Saharan Africa has just 204 kilometers of roads per 1,000 square kilometers of land area, compared to 1,515 kilometers in Europe. Many rural communities remain cut off from markets, hospitals, and opportunities because building traditional infrastructure across Africa's vast distances and challenging terrain requires massive investment that many nations simply cannot afford. Urban centers tell an equally challenging story. Cities like Lagos, Nairobi, and Johannesburg struggle with crushing traffic congestion. Commuters spend hours daily trapped in gridlock, losing productivity and burning fossil fuels. Public transportation systems, where they exist, are often overcrowded and unreliable. Informal transport networks fill the gaps, but aging vehicles contribute to air pollution and safety concerns. This is where Rwanda's story becomes remarkable. Instead of accepting these limitations, Rwanda chose to leapfrog traditional infrastructure entirely. It started with drones. In 2016, Rwanda became the first country in the world to implement a national drone delivery network for medical supplies. Working with California-based Zipline, they began delivering blood, vaccines, and emergency medical supplies to remote hospitals using autonomous aircraft. By 2021, more than 75% of blood deliveries outside Kigali were happening by drone. Think about that for a moment. While other nations debated regulations and worried about safety, Rwanda was already saving lives with autonomous aircraft. They demonstrated that you could skip building expensive road networks and instead build aerial highways. The technology worked. The regulatory framework worked. The economic model worked. This wasn't just about medical delivery. Rwanda was quietly building the world's most advanced drone ecosystem, learning how to integrate autonomous aircraft into national airspace, developing local expertise in remote piloting and aircraft maintenance, and most importantly, proving that advanced aviation technology could work in African conditions. The drone program delivered more than medical supplies. It delivered credibility. When Chinese aerospace company Yi Hang approached African governments about testing their autonomous passenger aircraft, Rwanda was the obvious choice. They already had the regulatory framework, the technical expertise, and the political will to embrace cutting-edge aviation technology. The partnership with Yi Hang represents a new model of technological collaboration. Rather than simply importing finished products, Rwanda is positioning itself as a testing ground and early adopter of advanced mobility solutions. Chinese engineers bring manufacturing expertise and capital investment. Rwandan regulators and operators bring real-world implementation experience and African market knowledge. This collaboration reflects broader shifts in global technology adoption. For decades, new technologies were developed in wealthy nations and slowly trickled down to developing markets. Rwanda is proving that developing nations can be early adopters and even leaders in emerging technologies, especially when those technologies solve local problems more effectively than traditional solutions. The Ehang ETA 610s addresses several uniquely African challenges simultaneously. Traditional road building in Rwanda's hilly terrain is expensive and time-consuming. Autonomous aircraft simply fly over geographical obstacles. Urban traffic congestion that plagues African cities becomes irrelevant when your commute happens 1,000 meters above the streets. 
More importantly, the aircraft is electric, addressing air quality concerns that affect millions of urban Africans. Traditional vehicles imported to Africa are often older, more polluting models. Electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft start with clean technology from day one, supporting Rwanda's ambitious environmental goals. The economic implications extend far beyond transportation. Rwanda is building a new industry from the ground up. Local technicians are learning to maintain advanced aircraft systems. Pilots are training on autonomous flight operations. Regulatory experts are developing certification processes that other African nations will likely adopt. This isn't just about moving people, it's about building technological capability and creating high-skilled employment opportunities. The demonstration flight on September 3rd carried representatives from Rwanda's Civil Aviation Authority along with journalists, sending a clear message about confidence in the technology. This wasn't a remote test or a publicity stunt. This was government officials literally putting their lives on the line to demonstrate their belief in autonomous aviation. But the real significance goes beyond any single flight. Rwanda is proving that African cities can be testing grounds for the most advanced urban mobility solutions on the planet. While cities in developed nations debate regulatory frameworks and conduct studies, Kigali is gathering real operational data on how autonomous aircraft perform in actual urban environments. The timing couldn't be better. Africa is urbanizing faster than any other continent. By 2050, more than half of Africa's population will live in cities. These cities are being built now, and their transportation systems are being designed now. Rwanda is demonstrating that these new cities don't have to repeat the transportation mistakes of older urban centers. They can skip directly to advanced mobility solutions. Consider the multiplication effect. If autonomous aircraft prove successful in Rwanda, the technology will spread to other African cities facing similar challenges. Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa are all dealing with urban congestion and transportation infrastructure gaps. Success in Rwanda creates a proven model that others can adapt and implement. The global implications are equally significant. Autonomous aircraft manufacturers need proving grounds where they can test their technology in real-world conditions without excessive regulatory barriers. Rwanda is positioning itself as the world's preferred location for advanced aviation testing, potentially attracting investment and partnerships from aerospace companies worldwide. This creates a virtuous cycle. International companies bring investment and expertise. Local institutions build technical capability. Successful demonstrations attract more companies and investment. Over time, Rwanda could become a major hub for autonomous aviation technology, exporting expertise and equipment to other emerging markets. The environmental impact deserves special attention. Traditional transportation development in Africa has often meant importing older, more polluting vehicles and building carbon-intensive infrastructure. Autonomous electric aircraft represent a completely different development path, one that aligns economic development with environmental sustainability from the start. Rwanda's broader development strategy makes this transition possible. The country has invested heavily in renewable electricity generation, making electric aircraft truly clean. They've built reliable telecommunications infrastructure that supports the 5G connectivity that autonomous aircraft require. Most importantly, they've created regulatory environments that encourage innovation rather than blocking it. This regulatory approach is perhaps Rwanda's greatest advantage. While developed nations often have complex, overlapping regulatory frameworks that make innovation difficult, Rwanda can build fresh regulations designed specifically for emerging technologies. They can move quickly, test thoroughly, and adapt based on results. The September demonstration represents more than technological achievement, it represents a fundamental shift in how we think about African development. For too long, the narrative has been about Africa catching up to developed nations, adopting technologies and solutions designed elsewhere. Rwanda is flipping that narrative. They're becoming first adopters of tomorrow's technologies, potentially leapfrogging traditional development stages entirely. This pattern repeats across different sectors. Rwanda adopted digital payment systems faster than many developed countries. They implemented universal health insurance when wealthier nations still debate healthcare models. They're building smart city infrastructure from the ground up rather than retrofitting existing systems. The flying car demonstration fits a broader pattern of technological leapfrogging. The success factors are replicable. 
Strong government leadership that embraces innovation. Regulatory frameworks designed for emerging technologies rather than protecting established industries. International partnerships that bring expertise while building local capability. Most importantly, willingness to be first and accept the risks that come with pioneering new technologies. Other African nations are watching carefully. Ghana has announced plans to test autonomous delivery drone. Kenya is exploring electric aviation for connecting remote communities. South Africa is investigating urban air mobility solutions for its major cities. Rwanda's success provides a roadmap that others can follow while adapting to their specific circumstances. The private sector implications extend beyond aviation. Successfully implementing autonomous aircraft demonstrates that Rwanda has the technological infrastructure, regulatory capability, and market sophistication to support other advanced technologies. This creates confidence among international investors considering Rwanda for fintech, artificial intelligence, renewable energy, and other high-tech investments. Tourism offers another multiplication effect. Rwanda has built a reputation as one of Africa's most technologically advanced nations, adding autonomous aircraft to attractions like mountain gorillas and clean, efficient cities creates a compelling narrative for high-value tourists interested in experiencing the future of African development. The skills and expertise being developed have applications far beyond passenger transport. Autonomous aircraft technology transfers to cargo delivery, emergency response, agricultural monitoring, and infrastructure inspection. The technicians learning to maintain e-hang aircraft today will be able to work on the next generation of autonomous systems tomorrow. Looking ahead, the implications become even more exciting. Current autonomous aircraft like the E-Hang E-216S represent first-generation technology. Flight times will increase. Passenger capacity will grow. Costs will decrease. Rwanda is positioning itself to be at the forefront of each technological generation, building expertise and market position that compounds over time. The urban planning possibilities are revolutionary. Cities designed around autonomous aircraft can be fundamentally different from cities built around cars. Parking lots become parks. Roads become narrower and more pedestrian-friendly. Residential and commercial districts can be more dispersed because commuting constraints disappear. Rwanda isn't just adopting new technology, they're potentially redesigning how African cities function. September 3, 2025 will be remembered as the day Africa took flight. Not because one aircraft carried two passengers across Kigali's sky, but because it demonstrated that African nations don't have to wait for tomorrow's technologies. They can build them, test them, and deploy them today. Rwanda's flying car isn't just about transportation. It's about proving that small African nations can lead global technological adoption. It's about creating new models of international collaboration. It's about building industries and expertise that didn't exist five years ago. It's about reimagining what African cities can become when they're not constrained by traditional infrastructure limitations. The aircraft that rose into Kigali's sky carried more than passengers. It carried Africa's technological ambitions, proof that the continent isn't just catching up to the rest of the world but potentially leading it into the future. In a world where technological leadership increasingly determines economic prosperity, Rwanda just announced that Africa is ready to compete at the highest levels. The age of African aviation has begun, and it's autonomous, electric, and revolutionary. The only question now is how fast the rest of the continent will follow Rwanda's lead into the sky.